On this edition of the Left Bench TV, a huge showdown in the lacrosse world you won't want to miss. Maryland football held its annual Pro Day. The Troop Gymkhana shows their fellow Terps their talent at their home show. And the Left Bench TV starts now. Sports came to a close this week while spring sports are in full swing. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Left Bench TV. I'm Sam Payer. And I'm Nolan Gelbard. It was a top three showdown in College Park Sunday night as the top ranked Penn State Nittany Lions came to town. All eyes in the lacrosse world were on Maryland Stadium and our Noah Gross was there for all of the action. Well, Maryland still may have crab cakes, but they might be leaving the lacrosse up to Penn State. The top ring Nittany Lions came to town and they took down the Terps 13-10 behind a great first quarter. The number three Terps playing host to a Big Ten rival to open up conference play. And right off the bat, Penn State showed why they are number one. The Nittany Lions meant business. A first quarter onslaught led to the Terps down 8-1 to one after the first 15 and the visiting fans were loving it. Jared Bernhardt and Louis Dubik added second quarter goals to cut the halftime deficit to five. And in the second half, here come the Terps. Four goals in about three minutes, two from Roman Puglisi. The deficit was cut to one, and Maryland Stadium had some serious energy. But the Nittany Lions proved too much and pulled away late. A valiant effort from the Terps came up short, and when the clock hit zero, it was the Nittany Lions celebrating a 13-10 win. Penn State probably returned the most um, coming back this year, and knowing that you know we were still plugging in some parts, I thought this game would be very important to find out, you know, how close we were, and um, you know we were right there. And I think you know there's going to be a chip on a lot of our shoulders. Uh, it's we have an expectation, and we didn't live up to it, so. Um, You'll see a better performance next week, I can guarantee that. Thanks, Noah. And after that tough loss, the Terps get almost a full week off. Their next game is against Michigan this Saturday at Maryland Stadium. The second-ranked women's lacrosse team defeated Princeton this week 15-7, scoring five goals in the first five minutes of the game. Maryland's hot start would help them coast to a victory. Jen Giles and Callie Hartshorn each firing four goals, and senior Megan Taylor had a remarkable 14 saves leading the Terps to a third straight win against a ranked opponent. And this one will also go down in the history books as the first ever women's lacrosse game to be broadcasted on Fox Sports 1. The Terps continued their winning streak on the road against Rutgers, defeating them in a 20-3 blowout. Brindy Griffin found the back of the net four times. She was just one of the season-high 13 different players scoring goals for Maryland. The game was also a family fair, affair as junior Callie Hartshorn faced her sister Marin, a freshman attack for the Scarlet Knights. And speaking of Callie Hartstrom, she came into the women's lacrosse program starting her career on a great note, winning a national championship and claiming the Big Ten Freshman of the Year award two years later. Callie has continued to dominate as a leader of the squad, and our very own Danielle Stein sat down with the Allentown, New Jersey native for the latest edition of Between Two Terps. I'm now joined by Junior Attack Hallie Hartshorn from the women's lacrosse team. Great to have you here today. Thanks for having me. So we want to get to know you a little bit better and tell us a little bit more about how you got into lacrosse growing up as a kid. I started off playing soccer. I was a huge soccer kid and then I went from basketball and then not until like sixth, maybe fifth grade, I became like interested in lacrosse. And um, once eighth grade, like freshman year of high school hit, that's when I started just to focus on one sport. I still played all three in high school, but I, I focused travel-wise on lacrosse. And your yeah. first year here, I mean, what a year that was for you and the team. Yeah. Huge win for you guys. What was that like to be part of the program? So it was it was awesome to come here and play with Zoe and Nadine and, and just get the chance to even compete for a Big Ten championship and then go all the way up to Gillette and 
like compete for a uh, championship. So just a surreal, surreal season. And we're hoping that we can finish that way this year too. It seems like you guys are always having a good time, having yeah. fun with each other. What's that like to be playing with all your best friends? Yeah, I mean, it's great. I mean, it's, it's people always say like, it's not only on the field, but it's off as well. But here, that's that's the truth. Like we, we all live together. We, we go out together. We hang out together almost every day like yeah it's, it's really it's the truth well we want to finish with just a little game to get to know you a little bit better so yeah. i want to ask two truths and a lie okay and i'll try to guess which one the lie is all right um i have more than one sibling um i got collegiate offers to play basketball and i have my motorcycle license Ooh. well you did say that you started to focus mostly on lacrosse at the end of high school so mm -hmm. i'm gonna guess that the basketball offer is the lie nope that's wow. actually true yeah um in high school uh basketball was actually one of my main focuses like bad we were we were a good basketball team in high school and at one point i got like a couple like little offers and i was like wow like and then maryland came along and i was like i can't i can't beat that like no. i can't i can't <laughs> The Maryland men's basketball team finally broke their postseason losing streak, but came up short in the NCAA tournament. Our Zach Solon has a recap of the Terp season and a look ahead for the future. Zach? Thanks, Sam and Nolan. For the Maryland men's basketball team, it was a season of ups and downs. They were picked to finish seventh in the Big Ten Conference, but they compiled a 13-7 record in conference play overall and ended up finishing fifth. Now, although they lost in the first round of the Big Ten Tournament to Nebraska, they scored a number six seed in the East region of the NCAA Tournament. In the first round, they won a thriller against number 11 Belmont, but then in the second round, they lost an all-out battle to number three LSU. Now, coached Mark Turgeon this year was working with one of the youngest teams in the country in Division I basketball. And after their tournament loss to LSU, the Terps struggled to process it, but they did look ahead to the future and were thankful for this season. We just came up short, man. I'm feeling kind of sick to my stomach right now. It's, it's tough. It's sickening. It's, it's so hurts. I told them all, coach fighting for us. We got to fight for him. We rallied. We fought. They made a heck of a play in the last seconds. You got to give them credit for that. Tough one to lose on the last shot. We, we stayed together. We kept fighting. We all love each other. all encourage each other. And uh, we were able to fight back and make it a game. You got to stay positive. And I told them we got to stick together. We'll be back here next year. Although no official decision has been made yet, it seems likely that Terp sophomore star Bruno Fernando will be leaving the team to enter the NBA draft. Also, it is unknown whether or not Jalen Smith will also decide to enter the NBA draft as he was a standout freshman for the team this year. Terps fans can look forward to a lot of returning stars, though, including freshmen like Eric Ayala and Aaron Wiggins, who will come into their sophomore years with already one season with an NCAA tournament bid under their belts. Also, it's expected that Anthony Cowan will return for his senior year and back to the Terps starting lineup. But for now, Nolan and Sam, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Zach. The Maryland women's basketball team won the Big Ten regular season title and made it to the finals of the Big Ten tournament. But they had their NCAA tournament run end much sooner than they would have liked. The Terps earned a three seed and home court advantage for rounds one and two, but after beating Radford in that round one matchup, they lost to number six UCLA in round two, failing to reach the Sweet 16 for the second straight year. Brianna Frazier is the only senior on the Terps squad, and while she will be a big loss for Brenda Freese's team, she is bringing in four high-level recruits, including the nation's top port point guard prospect, Ashley Owusu. More on her later in the show. And two basketball standouts are up for some end-of-the-season honors. Bruno Fernando is up for the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Award, given to the best center in college hoops. He's been on the watch list for the award since October from the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Kayla Charles is also representing the Terps as a Naismith finalist for the Cheryl Miller Award, which recognizes the nation's top small forward. The Hall of Fame will announce the winners during the Final Four coming up this weekend. And on top of that, Charles earned AP Honorable Mention All-American Honors. Now let's take it from the hardwood to the mats where senior wrestler Yusuf Amita is wrapping up his Maryland career in fitting fashion. Earned his second straight NCAA All-American honor. The New York native is the Terps' first two-time All-American since 2014. Amita also finished third place in the heavyweight class in the Big Ten tournament this year, the third straight year he placed at the tournament. 
Another group who's been soaring at the Xfinity Center all season, Maryland Gymnastics. The Gym Terps wrapped up their tw regular season ranked 28th in the country, the highest seed in program history. This sets them up nicely for the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship, giving them a bye in the first round of the tournament. On Friday, the Terps traveled to Athens, Georgia to compete in the regional second session. Last week, 13 football players were given the opportunity to work out at Maryland's annual Pro Day, where scouts, coaches, and team personnel from 29 NFL teams, two AFL teams, and even a CFL team got to take a look at some talent entering the upcoming draft. Our Morgan Weaver, Weaver take a look at, takes a look at some standouts on the day. Maryland football hosted its annual Pro Day here in Coalfield House, where 15 Terps look to showcase their talents in hopes of making it to the NFL. Pro Day participants took part in drills like the 40-yard dash, broad jump, and position-specific workouts to hopefully catch the eye of their future teams. They want to see you come out here and you know just prove prove that you can do the same things, the same things that I've done on film. Um, at the end of the day, we're going to play the game of football. This is a series of tests and you know drills designed to mimic the game but not necessarily replicate it exactly. Uh, they just want to see you give your best out here and you know that, that's what I set out to do and uh, at the end of the day they want to see you play football and help their team you know win a Super Bowl. Three players represented Maryland at the 2019 NFL Combine. Derwin Gray, Byron Cower, and defensive back Darnell Savage. He was the top prospect out of the group after turning heads with his impressive 4.36 second 40 yard dash. I'm just happy to be in this position and to have these opportunities, you know, to go to the combine. I watched it when I was growing up, so to actually be in it, it was a great experience. And just uh, just coming out here, like I said, with all my, my, uh, my teammates, and just kind of uh, experience this together, it was fun. After not being invited to the combine, a couple Terps felt like they had something to prove today. Ty and I are very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, fortunately, we were able to play at the Shrine game together. Uh, we both had great weeks there, and you know we carried that chip from everything that happened, you know, into the Shrine game, and and you know not getting invited to the combine or the Senior Bowl. Uh, those are things we just carried forward. Um, you know, Ty knew he was an you know, incredibly gifted athlete, incredible football player, and I felt the same way. We kind of both just, you know, shared in, shared in that moment, and today was an opportunity for both of us. Former players will now have the opportunity to attend NFL teams' local pro days and meet with teams individually. Now, these Terps will have to wait until April 25th to see if their names will be called in the 2019 NFL Draft. For the Left Bench TV, I'm Morgan Weaver. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Morgan. Some Terps have a close eye watching them after their performance in Pro Day. Trey Watson, who's expected to get drafted, was just invited to the New York Giants camp as one of the 30 possible private interviews with college prospects. It was a pivotal weekend for the Maryland baseball team as they entered the weekend just one game above 500, an opening conference play against a tough team, the Indiana Hoosiers. Terps ace Hunter Parsons was dealing Friday night against Indiana. The righty went eight shutout innings, striking out five. Parsons did not do it by himself, though. Check this out, an absolute robbery coming up here from Randy Bednar. Goes full extension and robs a home run from Indiana. Chris Alleen supplied the offense with Maryland, going two for four with a triple and scoring both of the Terps' runs. Maryland took the opener against Indiana two to zero. The rest of the weekend was all Hoosiers, though. Indiana score, outscored the Terps 39-9 over the next two games. They hit eight home runs and were able to take the series two games to one, dropping Maryland to 500 on the year at 13-30. Maryland's softball team had a similar weekend to baseball with a 3-2 win on Friday night, but in dramatic fashion with a walk-off at the bottom of the seventh thanks to, an, thanks to an error by Ohio State's first baseman. But after that, it was all Buckeyes. OSU mercyed the Terps 10-1 on Saturday in just five innings and took down Maryland easily in the rubber match 15-3. The series loss drops, to the, drops the Terps to 500 on the year at 17-17. 17 17. They now head to East Lansing to take on Michigan State this weekend. Last weekend, the Maryland track and field team went down to Florida for the University of North Florida Spring Break Invitational. While there, the Terps set a new school record in the men's and women's 4x400 meter relay. The women's, Santiago, Jones, Ward, and Fagan, broke a 17-year-old record for Maryland. And the men's, Robinson, Jones, Myrwad, and Morris, broke a record that lasted for 40 years. Finally, senior Greg Thompson was named Big Ten Field Athlete of the Week for his achievement in the men's discus throw. 
He came in first place with a distance of 61.39 meters and a new school record to go along with it. It has been a difficult season for the Maryland tennis team, entering their match Sunday against Illinois just 3-11. and 11. The struggle continued for the Terps, suffering a 4-0 loss at the hands of the fighting Illini. Freshman Ava Alexandrova came one game away from winning her match at the number two single spot. The finish early once Illinois clinched the victory. Coach Daria Panova hopes the Terps can turn things around April 5th against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Maryland men's soccer announced their new freshman class this week. The defending national champs will be adding eight freshmen to their squad for the 2019 season. One name that sticks out for the bunch is Ryan Bloomberg, who signed his scholarship in 2017, but decided to play for the Charlton Athletic under-23 team in England for a year and a half before coming to College Park. The Sydney Australian native plays center back, so expect him to try and compete for the role left open by Donovan Pines, who signed with DC United. And speaking of Donovan Pines, he is our Pro Terp of the Week. What a run he is on, winning the national championship in December, signing a homegrown player contract with DC United in January. And in March, he earns his first call up to the United States under 23 national team. It is the start of the 2020 Olympics qualifying cycle, which by rule features mostly players under the age of 23. Pines started a friendly match against Egypt and played about 15 off the bench against Netherlands. Well, there are some pro Terps making some big strides, but how Absolutely. about the Terps here in College Park making some big plays? Definitely, we have some super exciting plays for you guys, so let's get started. Starting at number five, senior infielder Bailey Boyd rips it down the line, scoring an RBI single for the Terps. Coming in at number four, watch as sophomore Roman Felici buries it in the cage, its second goal in just three minutes. What a play. Number three, Brindy Griffin had the defender spinning at the X with an incredible high to low fake for the goal. Number two, we're gonna take it to the diamond. Randy Bednar, you saw this earlier. He goes full extension and absolutely robs Indiana of a home run. And our number one play, check this out. Sophomore midfielder Bubba Fairman jumps over defender and rips it to the net. And our Terp of the Week is none other than Jen Giles. The senior midfielder had an incredible week scoring six goals in the last two games against Rutgers and Princeton and tacking on an assist. She now leads the team with 34 goals on the year to go along with 14 assists, which is just one shy of the team lead in that as well. Now for some more news about Terps past, present, and future. Katie Myers of Maryland Volleyball was selected to the U.S. National Volleyball Collegiate team competing in Japan in May. The sophomore had a standout year leading both teams and the Big Ten Conference with her 53 aces on the season. A big week for yet another recent graduate from the Maryland men's soccer program. Midfielder Amar Sadich has signed a one-year contract with the Montreal Impact of Major League Soccer. Montreal drafted the former Terp 34th overall in the 2019 MLS Super Draft. The deal also contains three option years. Sadich, who was named the College Cup's most valuable player in December, is already receiving praise excuse me, from his new head coach, Ramey Gard, saying his preseason performance proved he can help the club this year. And last but certain, certainly not least, the future Terps Maryland women's basketball signees Diamond Miller and Ashley Owusu were selected to the McDonald's All-American game. Owusu, the number five recruit in the country, did not take the floor, but Miller, the number 18 recruit, got some playing time, tallying six points, three blocks, and tied a game high with 10 rebounds. This is the second year in a row Maryland has had a representative in the game, with Shakira Austin earning a selection in 2018. Now, you may have seen them at the Xfinity Center during Maryland basketball halftime shows, but Jim Conna had the chance to take the floor on their own during the annual home show. Cameron Doney got a good look at the dynamic troupe. Cameron? Weeks of physical work practices and other performances has led to one of the final stops on this troops tour. Are you ready? Jim Khanna, a group that performs gymnastics and acrobatic tricks, have taken their talents back to their home turf. Members of the University of Maryland Jim Khanna troop to show their families and fellow turps their talent. But the payoff takes patience. So we have practice five days a week, um, minimum of eight hours uh, of practice. 
Um, and then you also have like involvement outside of normal practice hours. Um, so like backdrop painting is something that we do. Where we go to elementary schools and middle schools um, and perform for them in preparation of home show. While most of the troops acts involves trust and cooperation. Everybody needs to be committed and hardworking and working together or else things are just not going to work out well. So it's a ton of teamwork. Its members don't seem to mind because even after the show ends, the group's chemistry still shines. We're, we're one big family um, and I love that about us because everyone is always encouraging each other to reach their highest goals, reach the potential that they know that they can accomplish. I don't know about you, Nolan, but Jim Connor is my absolute favorite on-campus organization. It's They're absolutely incredible. incredible what they mm -hmm. do, 100%. Well, that's all we have for you for this edition of The Left Bench TV. I'm Sam Payer. And I'm Nolan Gobard. Thank you for watching, and make sure to keep up with all of our coverage by following The Left Bench on our Facebook and Twitter. And we'll see you next time.